You're watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. For the full episode, search Football Ramble wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes out Monday to Friday. Right, let's get on with it, shall we? The fact is, England's first half performance was enough to win the game. Yes, yeah. it was. Um, so when all said and done, you know, people can be a bit disappointed at the second half performance. Absolutely. You know, Gareth Southgate was. But don't forget that first half performance. You know, the game's 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, you want England more uh, to, to play more in that second half. And in the first half, again, they talked about the control. We talked about creating chances. Mm. You know, England looked brilliant. They could have been three up. Should have been three up at, at half time. <clears throat> um, in the second half, Italy did what they did in the Euros final. They yeah. suddenly were right, we're, we're going to press them, we're going to push them. And we've seen this time and time and time again with England. So the worrying thing is in the second half, it was the same old story. Yes, they held on and they held firm. People will say this is a below par Italian side. It, it, it is. It's not as good as the Euros final Italy team. And if people have been a little bit um, uh, uh, critical of, oh, well, that wasn't a great Italian team. Well, actually, if you look at the teams, the more experienced and bigger players than England had in that final without going on about that. But you, you had the same midfield, Jorginho, Verratti and Barella that started that Euros final. So you have a much more experienced uh, and much more sort of refined midfield, if, if you like. And you saw what happens when they step to England. And it is that midfield battle. The, 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 the pleasing thing was that England, despite losing that goal, Italy didn't really look like they had a lot of pressure they didn't look like scoring that much I know people might say oh come on it was a bit nervy it was nervy but England defended fairly well and Italy were restricted which is which is a good thing and the goal of course was a Maguire error the only shot Italy had on target was the goal that's right Right, so you have to bear that in mind so actually the mistake that Maguire makes which he then compounds with a further mistake is a key reason why England played the last half an hour under a lot of pressure because it gives Italy heart Mm -hmm. the crowd get into it Mm -hmm. we've been to that stadium it can be a pretty cold like atmosphere um, it gives Italy so much more than just a goal it gives them a chance of getting something out of the game yeah. which based on the first half performances Marcus and Jim and you've already said was absolutely no there was no chance they were going to be in it at all yeah. and Maguire doesn't need to do any of the stuff he does to yeah. make that mistake to compound that mistake if you give the ball away alright take your medicine yeah, and get, get back, get back in, in position because the goal was scored exactly from where he exactly, should be exactly. and, it, and he compounds it with another poor decision which to me feels like it's because he's not playing very much yeah. that means it happens he's got that in his locker anyway that kind of mm-hmm. clumsiness mm-hmm. anyway mm-hmm. Um, but then you know so you point out all his faults and point out what he's doing to, to hurt England in that, in that situation but then you have to come on, as I've said, the second half of the conversation where you say, well, who's going to play instead? And it's tough to, to, to make an argument. Yeah. Do, do you think part of that is the, is the, the aspects of game management that Southgate often att- attempts in these situations in the second half? Because obviously they were very defensive when they came out. It's all about containment early on in the second half in particular. <laughs> and I never feel comfortable with that purely because, of course, you, you, exp- you, know, you have to manage games, but it gives <laughs> teams the time to build the pressure. It's not necessarily about, mm. um, you know being vulnerable to conceding straight away but it you essentially hand the opposition a lot of time in which to figure you out and we've seen that happen to England and seen them not have really an answer to it it's when they have then been figured out and Over the exactly years. it's like he's exercised a lot of demon Southgate and re- yeah. reverting to type mm-hmm. is the main one and, that and he needs to, the only to get exa- rid of the only example I can think of where England haven't done that was the game against Germany in the Euros yes mm-hmm. And, and I don't know if that's because, and there might be other games, Marcus, that you can remember better than me, but that might be because Germany weren't actually that good and it was at Wembley and England mm-hmm, were mm-hmm. pumping and they were really up for it. But the, I don't see why, perhaps because of the lack of legs in midfield, as we talked about with Phillips, I don't see why they renege, sorry, they kind of hand over so much control and mm-hmm. so much lack of initiative. But if you're going to do that, then play on the break and hit them on the yeah. break. And I, I know things are easier said than done, but England have got players to do that. Saka gave them so many problems. Mm. Yeah. You know, Kane's hold-up play was great. I mean, Kane performed very, very well. Yeah, he was fantastic. Uh, you know, you, it was like Lorenzo, so who were there for the taking. Yeah. Exactly, they're, they're, yeah. They're, just, they're, they're well, so they're, creaky. Indeed, Bonucci, who is old, you know, he's ageing, he, he he wasn't playing. So, you know, one of their, their main um, uh, defenders, you might argue. You know, they, 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 I, I think that that's one of the things um, that England need to do. And that's one of the things that England can do because of the players they have. Grealish is a great outlet as well. And if not, then Foden yeah. can, can come on. There's a lot there. Yeah, exactly. And when Sterling's fit, he's he's another Foden one. got a good 12 minutes. I know, poor old Foden. But I mean, he was sacrificed, wasn't he? It was, it was a show. As soon as he was sending off... He was you, sacrificed? Uh, it seems wow. fucking harsh. Sp- figuratively. Or just because Luke Shaw got sent off. Figuratively speaking. Uh, you know, That's um, a really diplomatic incident across the Manchester <laughs> Divide, that. But I, I, I think that w- w- with England, you know, you, you've got to get out. And if you just pump long balls... Do you know yeah. what I mean? To be honest with you, if you're going to do that, bring on Tony. 
He does that for Brentford, doesn't he? Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like, if, yeah. if you're going to revert to type, that's the funny thing. But obviously, that's that's a bit of a yeah. sort of silly point to make. I do think they deserve immense credit for hanging on to that lead with ten men. Actually, yeah. they they re- they didn't look in much danger of losing mm. it. They're really professional, really really organised. But they were, I, pumping, I think... they were smashing the ball out of defence at <laughs> yeah. times just to clear the ball. It didn't look that assured, did it? Bearing, in mind, know, it? bearing in mind, you know, England have not won in Italy since 1961. Yeah, there's that yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Italy's qualify. You know, record in the qualifiers, despite not. Um, uh, qualifying for the World Cup is good. It's their first defeat in 41 Euro qualifiers. Mm. Obviously, you've got World Cup qualifiers in there, which would give it a, a slightly different view, but only very slightly. Uh, you know, England don't beat Italy often no. uh, in a competitive, and sadly, they don't count Le Tournoir as uh, a proper competitive <laughs> uh, match. It, it's, it's been a long time. So I'll, it is a very good win. You can't Absolutely. get away from that. And it was a very good half, you know, but the second half, it, 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 it's that reverting to tie. People are a bit like, come on. Gives you some concerns, doesn't it? It seems yeah. to me almost that England makes some sort of assumptions when they leave. It's like they think, right? We've, you know, we've we've got as many goals as we're going to score now. Yep. It's impossible for us to score <laughs> any more. Stop trying. Yeah. What we have, we hold, and it's not necessarily the case. And I think it's that 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 way that England can become quite passive mm-hmm. in really key moments of the game. It, is very clearly still there, mm-hmm. and that is that is what needs to be yeah. removed next. Yeah, I I, I, I do agree. Um, I thought the referee was a little bit card happy. He likes to be involved. It does like mm. to be involved. Now, I, I thought the penalty was a penalty. I, I wasn't yeah, sure at yeah. first, but you can just see the arm lingers and then makes a slight but, movement but, towards the ball, know, which is not a natural movement. The Italian players did kind of make it a tough going to referee, though. They will like, do that. You, 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 you have a situation where sometimes you can genuinely see where, um, and maybe maybe you could argue with the Maguire on Barella thing where he goes over the top and hits him on the top of the foot, mm. with the way that there's a lack of protection in football boots. It's a nasty days. one, though. Yeah, you can see why that would have been an- annoying to players because they're like, hang on a minute, you're yeah. fucking late. Yeah. That's clumsy, and yeah. you could have really hurt one of our key players, yeah, and plus yeah, he's yeah, our yeah, friend yeah, yeah. and all the rest of it. So you get all that. But they they were really combative on every little decision yeah. and, and and that's what frustrates not just not because they're Italian not because it's bloody foreigners and all the rest of it but as a general rule it happens in the Premier League every, every mm-hmm. week and English players are just as bad at it mm-hmm. half the time what annoys me more than anything else with that kind of situation is like you're on the break mm. right and there's a foul to stop the break and the player gets a yellow card and, and then the players just go on for 30 seconds yeah. it's like look we know what's happened. Yeah. The foul's been given. Yeah. The yellow card's been given. That's the fucking law. Yeah. Yeah. What do you expect is going to happen that's any different? Know, yeah. You're not going to get anything different to that. Mm. So just get on with it. It's not like you can argue that particular decision because it's exactly how it happens every single time. Mm. Not many people know this, but um, in, in rugby, only the captain can talk to the referee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could learn so much from Couldn't them. We? Yeah. yeah, I mean, how many of those England players drank their own piss after the game, for example, <laughs> yeah. Jim? How are they going to bond? Yeah. yeah. Grealish by accident. <laughs> <laughs> In New York. In New yeah. York. Uh, Cheers for watching another fantastic clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Make sure you click like on this video and subscribe to the channel, which means you will not miss a single upload.